This is a story of a very special bird and a man whose commitment and determination saved a species on the brink of extinction. Don Merton and his dedicated team had a never say die approach that saved this tiny bird and inspired people around the globe. It began in the 1970s when <coughs> um, people were mutton birding on Little Mungary Island uh, and they cut a helipad. Now the black robin at this stage had gone from the main island and from Pitt Island, all the other islands in the Chatham Islands in fact, and it was only on Little Mungary Island, which is just like a, the deck of an aircraft carrier moored in the middle of the roaring 40s. It's um, a tiny rock stack. Uh, rising 600 feet out of the uh, ocean, and that's where the robins lived for the best part of 100 years. That was their only home. There's only about 18 birds in 1972. By 1975, there's only seven birds left, including just two females. Anyway, we got down there to move them to Big Bungary Island, the neighbouring island, uh, where we'd planted 20,000 uh, rooted cuttings to provide some more habitat for them. Very difficult task because we had to scale this huge cliff and in a tiny boat uh, take the birds across between the two islands in very rough water. They all survived. They did breed, but they didn't recover on the new island. And uh, by uh, 1979, that actually dwindled down to five, including still just two females. So um, I proposed a rather crazy uh, idea of cross-fostering them to boost numbers because one of the birds nested and it lost its nest in a storm and uh, it immediately started to re-nest and I thought well if they can do that they can lay more than two eggs a year. We tried warblers first, the warblers weren't able to feed them enough uh, food and the chicks died at about 10 days so we tried the tomtits and uh, that, that worked and numbers started to come up and up and up and we found that some of the robins raised by tomtits were actually imprinted on tomtits and they either wouldn't breed at all or they wanted to mate with a tomtit, you see, which is not on. And, and so we would synchronise the hatching dates of the robins in latter years to unite robin broods of the same age and put them back into the very few robin nests. We'd had to stretch the nests, make them bigger to accommodate far more young ones, four or five chicks, their normal brood is just two, and so the, the nest could actually accommodate them. We had to feed the pair of robins uh, extra food every day, several times every day, right through the six weeks of the fledgling phase. That's when they're out of the nest, and uh, but the female and male robins are still feeding them. So it was a, a, quite a huge task, very labour intense. Although there are two females, there's only one female that actually bred successfully. That was old Blue, and she uh, lived to a ripe old age of about 13 years, which is uh, about twice the lifespan of uh, most robins. In her geriatric years, she effectively saved her species from extinction, so she was a, a wonderful, wonderful bird. And by the uh, late 1980s, there was over 100 robins. <laughs> so uh, we were able to stop. And our best uh, reckoning of the number now is probably about 140 birds in total. The incredible story of the Black Robin Rescue is an outstanding example of what you can achieve in conservation when you put your mind to it. And it reminds us that even when all seems lost, the battle can still be won.